Hi, thank you for joining. My name is Sir Kumet. I am a second year PhD student at Georgia Tech, advised by Sebastian Pokuta. And I'm going to present our paper, Boosting Franco by Chasing Gradients. This algorithm addresses constraint optimization problems. So I will start by giving a little introduction and discussing the benefits of applying Franco of in this setting. And I'm also going to discuss its main limitations. Hopefully, this will provide you with the intuition behind how I came up with the boosting idea. So the boosting Frankov algorithm aims at better aligning the distant directions of Frankov with those of the negative gradients. And to achieve this, although you may require to use, you may be required to use uh, multiple linear minimizations per iteration, the progress obtained overcomes this cost and leads to significant speedups. Uh, I will show some computational experiments and conclude by mentioning opportunities for future extensions. So consider the following optimization problem where we are in Rn or space of matrices and I assume F to be smooth and convex and C to be a compact convex set and let V be a set such that its convex rule is C. So for example, if C is a polytop, we can let V be the set of vertices. So this template includes the following problems. So sparse logistic regression and low rank matrix completion. But in the experiment section, we will also address some other problems. So a natural approach to solve the constraint optimization problem is to use any efficient that works in the unconstrained setting and to add projections back onto C to ensure feasibility. For example, if you use gradient descent, um, then if your gradient step takes you outside of C, you can add a projection back onto C to ensure that XT plus one is feasible. And there are nice convergence properties for these types of methods, but the per iteration cost may be very expensive. And this is not necessary because C may have a weird shape so that it is hard to do operations on it because for the same sets and even for commonly used sets in optimization, projections can be expensive while linear minimizations are relatively cheap. So for example, if you take the L1, L2 or L infinity ball, projections and linear minimizations have the same worst case uh, rate, uh, complexity, but linear minimizations are much more, uh, is, uh, more, much easier to implement in practice. Now, if you look at the RP ball where P isn't one to infinity, then projections are hard to compute, whereas linear minimizations are available in closed form. And perhaps the most striking example is that of the nuclear norm ball, where a projection requires a full SVD, whereas a linear minimization only amounts to computing, computing the top pair of singular vectors, which has complexity linear in the number of non-zero entries in a matrix. Uh, this number in, in many uh, experiments, many applications of interest, uh, the number of non-zero entries is much smaller than m times n. And there are also some other very interesting examples. But so the question is, can we find a gordon based method that avoids projections? And the answer is yes, and is the Frank Wolf algorithm, also known as the conditional gradient algorithm. So this algorithm dates back to the 50s and proceeds as follows. At each iteration, you solve a linear minimization. Uh, over the feasible region given by the gradient. And so in this case, for example, this gives you the following vertex VT. And then you move in that direction with a step size between zero and one so that the new iterate belongs to the length segment. This shows that XT plus one must be feasible as well because of com the convexity of C. So Frankov is able to ensure a feasibility of its iterate without ever using projections, but using linear minimizations instead. So you can also summarize Frank Wolf as you pick a vertex and you move in that direction. Of course, this vertex, this vertex, you pick it using gradient information so that the overall sequence converges. And because it is projection free, Frank Wolf, Frank Wolf has been successfully applied to traffic assignment, computer vision, optimal transport, adversarial learning, and many others. The convergence rate of Frank Wolf is LD squared over T, where L is the smoothness constant of F and D is the diameter of C. Uh, this rate is uh, quite nice and it cannot be improved. And if you do, for example, a parallel with gradient descent, then you would like the rate to be faster if M is strong convex, but um, this is not the case here uh, for Frank Wolf. And why is that? Well, just consider the following very simple uh, illustration. So minimizing the square norm over a triangular region, starting from the top vertex, and remember that Frank Wolf minimizes the function by moving towards vertices. So in this case, for example, you pick the bottom left vertex 
you move in that direction, and then you iterate. And you can see that Franco fields is very inefficient zigzagging behavior. Um, and this is the main limitation of Franco that it, because it is only allowed to follow vertex directions, um, the sequence of iterates produced might be very suboptimal. Um, so, and so, so there have been uh, several variants proposed to improve Frank Wolf. Perhaps the most famous one is the OA step Frank Wolf algorithm, which breaks the zigzagging tra trajectory by allowing also to move away from vertices. So in this case, X3, uh, if you're at X3, you move to X4 by moving away from X0. The only drawback is that to be able to ensure feasibility of uh, the new iterate when you move away, away from vertices, you need to store the decomposition of the iterates uh, in memory. And this can become expensive in memory usage and therefore also in computation time. So DSCG is a variant that is memory free. Um, so more precisely, uh, it's a variant of the pairwise Frankov algorithm, but the idea is the same. And it works very well in practice. Another variant that works very well in practice is BCG, the blended conditional gradients algorithm, which is basically uh, an efficient variant, a cheaper variant of the fully corrective Frankov algorithm. Uh, the fully corrective Frankov algorithm being much too expensive to be used in practice. So if we come back to our fundamental problem, can we split Frankov in a simple way, or perhaps in a simpler way? Um, and to this, we had the, the following uh, rule of thumb in optimization, that is to follow the steepest direction. So, so can we achieve the same thing for Frank Wolf? Well, this is the idea behind the boosting uh, Frank Wolf, boosted Frank Wolf algorithm, that is to uh, move in directions that are better aligned with the negative gradient, and not just uh, directions given by the vertices. Uh, note here uh, that we only seek to better align the direction and not to follow the exact direction of the negative gradient. Of course, we want our rhythm to stay projection free. So we need to estimate this new direction uh, in a smart way. Uh, and in our case, it is by using vertices. And this will get, this will ensure that the new iterate is feasible. So this is the question. Can we build a direction that is better aligned with the negative gradient and that allows to update xt plus one without projections? So consider the following uh, drawing which led to this boosting idea, actually. So um, you start with Frankov. So Frankov gives you this V0 vertex uh, from the linear minimization of the gradient. Uh, and you have lambda 0 u0, which is the project projection of the gradient onto the line segment, onto the line. And uh, the residual is R1. And we can see that the Frankov direction, V0 xt, is not very well aligned with uh, the negative gradient. And that is because the residual is large. So if you want to better align the descent direction of Frankov with the negative gradient, well, you want to close this residual. So what you do is you uh, do another round of linear minimization on this residual. This gives you a new projection and a new residual, and then you can iterate again. But if you already stop here, you can see that by summing the two projections, uh, by the way, note that these projections are uh, just an inner product, so very easy to compute. So if you sum these two projections, you obtain a vector d, um, that is already very well aligned with the negative gradient. And then we scale this vector to have feasibility of the new iterate. So, you, so, so, so this vector GT is better aligned with the negative gradient and gives a rule on how to update XT plus one in this direction. Uh, and that, that guarantees XT plus one to be feasible because you can notice that XT, XT plus GT, this line segment belongs to C. So for any step size between zero and one, the new iterate will belong to C. So um, more precisely, suppose I denote by KT the number of rounds, alignment rounds. So, be, so on the previous picture drawing that was KT was equal to two. But here, so we have the following decomposition. So if I scale by the sum of the lambdas, uh, then I can see that GT is actually, uh, that GT plus XT belongs to C. Right. And by convexity, this shows that the whole length segment belongs to C. So this is, this is why we can follow a direction GT that is better aligned with the negative gradient and that allows to update XT uh, without needing projections. So this is just uh, writing down what we have been drawing before. Um, so a bit more in a, for 
more general purpose. So from a reference point Z, uh, chasing a direction Nabla. So in our case, Z was XT and Nabla was a negative variant. Also not here, uh, technicality just to ensure convergence of the procedure. Um, I'm not sure actually if you really need this in practice, but I chose to leave it there just to be rigorous. Um, but what is perhaps more interesting is the to notice that the stopping criterion of the procedure is an alignment condition uh, on the directions we iteratively built. So if the we, we cannot improve the alignment by at least delta, then we stop the procedure and return the direction. Um, and again, this is because we only seek to improve the alignment, not to seek the perfect alignment. And we want this procedure to remain efficient. So whenever we cannot sufficiently improve it, we stop the procedure and we move in that direction. And this will provide already a uh, huge progress as we will see in the experiments. Uh, also notice that capital K here is just to cap the maximum number of rounds in the procedure. Uh, in case we are in a situation where the linear minimization is partic particularly expensive. But these default values here already work uh, very well in practice. So we can uh, some, we can write the boosted Frank Wolf algorithm in the following compact way. And if we compare to Frank Wolf, we have replaced the linear minimization with this alignment procedure. And then we update uh, our point with a step size between zero and one uh, to ensure feasibility. Now, if we go back to our, go back to our triangular experiment, remember that Frankov had this very inefficient zigzagging uh, behavior, whereas boosted Frankov can converge in just one iteration. So of course, it's because here the setting is very simple. So in gener general, what is the convergence rate of boosted Frankov? And I've mentioned that this procedure uh, requires many rounds of alignments, and each round is a linear minimization. So does that mean that the boosted Frankov algorithm is too expensive to be used in practice? And how does it compare to the state of the art. So first, the convergence rate, uh, I denote by nt the number, of round, the number of iterations up to t, where at least two rounds of elements will perform. Remember that if I do only one round, then I'm just doing front off because I haven't tried to increase the element. If I do two rounds, I've already tried to increase it a little bit. So I'm just looking at the scenario where boosted front off is, if, uh, is used. Okay? And in this case, I have this uh, near linear uh, convergence rate and the assumption is simply to state that this nt is non-negligible. If it is negligible, it means that almost every iteration does only one round of alignment. That is, we're just doing front wolf. So of course, in that case, then the convergence rate is just that of front wolf, that is one over t. So here you might wonder, maybe in practice, the boosted procedure is never used. Well, actually, it is always used. Uh, and actually, nt is almost equal to t. So this really proves that in the in practice there was a lot of room of improvement for Frank Wolf and that the boosting procedure, the, this boosting method, really achieved this improvement. As we can see in the experiment, so we compared boosted Frank Wolf to the OST Frank Wolf algorithm, BCG and DICG, uh, on a series of uh, on a variety of objective functions and feasible regions, to, just to show that the boosting procedure is really uh, efficient uh, in a wide set of uh, experiments. So the top right experiments uh, traffic assignment, and the bottom right is a collaborative filtering with a few balls. So we also run a, a line search free variants for boosted Frank Wolf and OSF Frank Wolf. For BCG and DCC ICG, the line search free variants were not competitive at all. So here are the results. In orange, we have the boosted Frank Wolf algorithm, and we can see that it consistently outperforms the other algorithms, uh, both uh, in number of iterations and in CPU time. So it's very uh, important also to insist that this is much faster in CPU time, showing that the procedure is not too expensive, that there is no hidden cost, and simply because the progress obtained overcomes this extra cost, and uh, I mean, it really overcomes this cost and leads to significant gains in performance. So this algorithm can really be used in practice. At last, I would like to mention an extension to DICG. So here we applied the boosting uh, procedure to DICG, and we can see in purple, that it is very efficient, showing that this boosting method can be applied to Frank Wolf, but also to its variants. So for those of you of, who are familiar with DICG, you pick an OA vertex, you pick a Frank Wolf vertex, and you move in that pairwise direction, Pt minus AT. And because there is this reference point AT, in boosting DICG, you apply the procedure to the reference point AT, but also to chase the negative gradient direction. So uh, takeaways, so projection-free algorithms are of considerable interest in optimization. 
we have proposed an intuitive, simple, and generic boosting procedure to speed up Frank Wolf and also its variants. And that it's very uh, important to understand that although each iteration may seem more expensive, the progress obtained really overcomes this cost. Uh, and so in the end, it's not expensive at all, and there is really a progress obtained, and uh, which leads to significant gains in performance. At last, we focused on smooth convex objective functions, but we also expect uh, improvements in other areas of optimization. So for example, in stochastic optimization, you could apply the procedure to chase not the, the exact gradient, but the stochastic estimator of the gradient. And we actually already started some experiments and it works also very well there. So hopefully there are also uh, some other uh, areas where we can extend this method. Um, but I will conclude here. So thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and please feel free to reach out for any question. Thank you.